on the teaching of the word of God. If you look at a deeper life in the early years, we emphasized the teaching of the word of God. Publicly, whether it was a Monday or a Tuesday, whether it was a Thursday or Friday, whether it was Sunday or Saturday uh, workers' meeting, it was always, always the word of God. Always the word of God. Always teaching, line upon line, precept upon precept. And when it came to counseling, if you have been partakers of this benefit that we're talking about, in the early days, you will see that the counseling was not on healing. The counseling was not on deliverance. The counseling was not on all these, uh, you know, I had a dream, I had a problem, I have a vision, I have a prophecy, I have a, I have a revelation, I have a gift of the Spirit, I have this, I have that, I discern that Spirit, I have this sickness, something is crawling up all over my body. It wasn't that. Lady, there's nothing to laugh about. I'm not your boyfriend, I'm your preacher. So look at the Word of God and hear what I'm preaching. Now, when you, at the early years, you will see that it was the preaching of the word of God. It wasn't, uh, you know, heal me, lay hands on me, I want this, I want that, I want this other thing. It was just the word of God every time. And you see, over now, these years, when you look at the people that are lining up for counseling, it's no more the teaching ministry. It is no more the word of God that we are emphasizing. What people are now emphasizing is, I am sick. Something is crawling all over my body. Something is happening this way. My business is not going. In the early years, it was the teaching of the word of God. Now, you can see the children of Israel. They were exalting or lifting up the miracle ministry. Now, at the time of Jeremiah, above the teaching ministry. They forsook the way of the Lord. Now, the same thing you can tell uh, among us. As we have grown fat and grown thick, as we have multiplied, and as the physical blessings of God have been upon us, there are people that have gone astray. Why? Is it because... The word of God is no more available. Nay, we still have all the cassettes that we had listened, that we had uh, preached in our workers' retreats, in our leadership congress, and in our general retreats, and in all the meetings in the early years. A uh, few weeks now, I've been listening to some of the old messages to understand whether the fault is that we didn't teach everything that the people ought to know. Whether we didn't preserve for you the things that you ought to have known. And I've been listening to them. And uh, in fact, I felt that maybe the thing to do is not to come and repeat all these things, but to bring the cassettes and to make you listen to them and to make you see what had been spoken about in the Word of God. And you have the cassettes at home with you. You have the cassettes in the States with you. You have the cassettes in your fellowships with you. And you have the books. You have the tracts. And as you see all these things, you see that it's not the problem that there is no Word, there is no doctrine, there is no teaching. It is not that we have not preserved the Word of the Lord. It is just that the devil has taken over many lives, taken over many fellowships, taken over many pastors, taken over many overseers. It is because the devil has taken over that even though the Bible is there, the tracts are there, the cassettes are there, the literature is there, everything is there, we are not looking at them anymore. The people forsook the way of the Lord. Think about deeper lives. When God raised up this deeper life for a purpose. So that the light, the fullness of the light of the gospel will be in our midst. And then through this ministry, then we can begin to take the word, the light, the power of God. And the preaching of the entirety, of the totality of the word of God to all the people around. Some of you are too young to know this. But we shall tell you. Because I've read it to you. It says, you young people, 
ask us who are your fathers. You young people, ask us who are your elders. What it was, the years of many generations, you ought to ask us and we ought to be telling you before this deeper life we're talking about, before we, before we started, all the fellowships and all the major cities in this nation, they knew next to nothing on Christian dressing, on restitution, on sanctification. A lot of the gospel churches and the Pentecostal churches, you will see them and you'll be wondering what kind of groups they were. But by the grace of God, God raised up this church. And as we raised up, we began to, you know, spread our tents everywhere. Our retreats brought people all around. And people from those denominations, they will come and they will catch the fire. And they took the flame back to their places. That's why you find that little by little, dressing started changing in all these churches. Am I right? That's why you find that some pastors and churches began, even though they, are, they might not have got the full thing, they begin to talk about restitution. Eternal security was the main thing they were teaching them in almost all the churches. Pentecostal churches, evangelical churches, scripture union, almost everywhere. But as we began to emphasize the teaching of the word of God, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Eventually, some people that had been on eternal security, playing with sin, living in sin all the time, will begin to see a new change in them. And we begin to see that some of the people, before we started, polygamy was very common in evangelical churches. Polygamy was very common in many of the denominations. But as we began to emphasize it, emphasize it, emphasize it, emphasize the word of God, a lot of the people, they were now realizing that the teaching of the word of God is one man, one wife. What did the people know about rapture before tribulation, before days, uh, church, deeper life, before we got up and started teaching? In many of the places, there were uh, people that will say, tribulation will come. I can tell you places in Imo State, places in Anambra State, places in uh, Cross River, all over, and in the north as well, where they were modeled up about eschatology about the teaching of the word of God that the rapture will take place after that the great tribulation and then after that and after that all the eschatological teachings people were ignorant but God raised up this church and we didn't do any other thing but teaching the word teaching the word teaching the word now if Israel be without the true God what's going to happen to these people some of those people their fire is gone out their hope is that whenever Deeper Life is having something, a program for ministers, a program for general retreat, they will come and light their dead log of wood, light it in the fire again, and take the fire back to their nominations again. And they are pleading with us, and they are begging us, and they are saying, let the fire keep on burning. Let the fire keep on burning. So we can bring our sticks and woods, put it in your own fire, and then go back. They are asking for our literature. They are asking for our curses. But... If we ourselves, we know our problem. The doctors are sick. The patients will be dying. The nurses themselves are fainting. We who are to heal the sick spiritually, we who are to take the fire to all these places, we ourselves, our wood is bringing out smoke without flame. How can we help them? And as they're giving us invitations, we're saying, hold your invitations to start with. We ourselves now, we don't know where we're going to begin. That our, our audiences, our congregations, our church buildings are littered with excreta. They're littered with corruption. They're littered with lying. They're littered with an exaggeration. They're littered with worldliness. They're littered with all these evil things that we ourselves too, we have our own problem now because we are without a teaching priest. Teaching priest. Teaching priest. The priest that will teach, these were the people that God appointed. I don't want to mention the name of the state overseer. A few years ago, I called him. I said, you are a teacher. Don't copy anybody. And don't go after all this miracle, vision, prophecy. I said, we need you. We need you. 
and he was my boy in the early years. Where well, he still thinks he's my boy now, but obedience is what will tell us to make us know. Whether you are a Timothy, my son in the faith, that will be able to go back to wherever we place you, and these things that we have taught you, you know my lifestyle, Paul the Apostle said, and you know the teaching, and the things that you have known among many witnesses, go and confirm it to the people. He was my boy. And I had a lot of influence in his life. And because I'm a teacher myself, the influence I had on his life made him a real teacher. And I called him, I said, this uh, gives of the spirit, healing, deliverance, watching for witches and wizards. I said, be careful. You're a teacher. Don't lose this thing. We don't have a lot of you teaching people in the ministry. And the few of you that, we have, that can lay line upon line, precept upon precept, let's preserve you. Keep the teaching ministry. <laughs> well, a lot of people now have lost the teaching ministry. All they're looking for now is, you know, how to work a miracle, how to make the blind eyes open, how to get a bread for the hungry, how to get money for the jobless, how to get prosperity for the poor, how to get this. And all these people are getting rich and they are denying the Lord and they are dying and going to hell. Let's have a teaching priest. Let's have the people that can teach the word of God and emphasize the teaching from the beginning to the very end. And then it says they were without law. You people, what have you done with the tracts that we gave you? Have you dis uh, do you still have them? Do you still have others may? I cannot. I don't think you have them. You don't know where they are. Because the way I see your life, for years you have not read that tract. I found it back, my lost tears. We gave it in your hand. What have you done with it? You sit in a toilet. Something that will take you to heaven. Something that will prepare you for the rapture. Something that will make you different from all the multitudes of this world. You've thrown it away. You are now without law. How about the teachings of the word of God? How about all the cassettes of this church? All you people. The cassettes of uh, the side road ministry. The ministries that don't last beyond a month. The ministries that don't last beyond a year. The ministries that don't last beyond this world. Because all they are emphasizing is uh, no restitution, no holiness. There is no teaching on sanctification. There is uh, nothing that will show that in your marital life, this is the standard of the family. Those are the cases you forget me. You abandon all the cases we put in your hand from the headquarters here. The teaching of the word of God that takes us years to be able to bring out of the word of God that has cost us our very life and blood. We put that in your hand, you relegate that one to the background. And the people that have never sweated, never consecrated, never placed themselves upon the altar of God, and all they are looking for, they are just looking for goody goodies in the Bible and joining this with this. Those are the cassettes you are all going about with. Now you have no law. Now you have no doctrine. Now you have nothing to make you establish. Now you do not have anything that will confirm the faith of the word in your heart of a long time. Israel now became a nation without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. These people had backsliding. They had gone away from the real thing that God had appointed for them. And now Jeremiah came to them eventually and said, is this nation going to perish like this? Other nations have risen and fallen. Other nations have, you know, expanded and have gone down. And the same thing we can tell you. Other ministries and churches have risen and fallen. They have started and they have gone out of the way. Nobody knows about them today. They are only in the books of history now. And their children do not even know what happened or what heritage they had in the past. Are you going to make this deeper life like that? That you cannot continue in the word of God? That's why Jeremiah called them and he said, come back. Come back. We know what we were. We know what we are now. And we need to come back to where we were.